<laughs> That's going to do it for us. Doug Smith is here with the News Edge, Doug. All right, thanks. New tonight on News Edge, bullets fly near St. Pete's Baywalk. Tonight, hear from the young man who spent his Christmas nursing a gunshot wound and learn why people are concerned about security. Plus, the day after Christmas reveals a dirty truth. Now one Bay Area county is hoping to come up with a better way to clean up. And social networking websites like MySpace are now a target for crime. And these cyber attacks are becoming meaner and more personal. From Fox 13, the most powerful name in local news, this is News Edge at 11. And good evening, I'm Doug Smith in for Mark Wilson. Fox is up front tonight with Christmas night chaos at Baywalk. It left a St. Pete man recovering from a gunshot wound. Tonight, News Edge reporter Gloria Gomez tells us why some are now calling for change. It was supposed to be a fun night at the movies, but for this 20 year old, the real drama happened outside the theater. I thought a bullet was traveling through my body. This young man, who we are not identifying, was shot in the leg on Christmas night. He, his girlfriend, and family had just left Baywalk, a popular hot spot in downtown St. Pete. Crowds and chaos spilled onto the streets when suddenly a man in a white charger began catcalling his girlfriend. After telling the suspect to cool it, the man drove around the block and took aim. I told my sister to run. By the time I looked, tried to see who it was. And by the time I started running, I got shot in my leg one time. Instead of panicking, this future paramedic remembered what he had learned during his EMT courses and put it to use. I try to stay calm, breathe, you know. And I look back, I look at my legs, it's just blood everywhere. Shots were fired not once, but twice that night. St. Pete police say extra officers were called in to seal off the area. You can imagine there was a period of time when you know, before everybody's in place and things are still happening, that we're trying to uh, figure that out and regain control of the situation. Baywalk management says security cleared the plaza in a timely manner, adding it is dependent on people to act lawfully and orderly. At the first round of gunfire. City Council member Bill Foster just... witnessed the Christmas chaos at Baywalk and says security needs to be stepped up before a popular attraction attracts no one. If we don't do something, we're killing it. Because the people that were there last night to watch a movie, they won't be back. Gloria Gomez, Fox 13 News. Now, in addition to the shootings, there were a number of fights, even a few people arrested for disorderly conduct. Anybody with information is urged to call the St. Pete Police. A tiger attack at the San Francisco Zoo is now being treated as a crime. Police are trying to figure out if the 300-pound Siberian tiger escaped on its own or if someone helped the animal get out. The tiger killed a zoo visitor and mauled two brothers. Officers later shot and killed the tiger. Zoo officials don't know yet how the tiger got past a 15-foot wide moat or over walls 20 feet high. And we know that the, the attacks occurred at two different locations. You know, we're going to try and piece together exactly what happened. Um, you know, last night we put out a call for uh, any witnesses um, to call us to let us know, um, and, and, and that's what we need. Officers searched the entire zoo with searchlights and thermal imaging equipment. Tonight, they're saying they're positive there are no other victims. Well, experts say these kinds of zoo escapes are rare, but they have happened even here in the Tampa Bay area. Just last year at Lowry Park, a rare Sumatran tiger got loose. Uh, she escaped from her night house while visitors were still inside the park the zoo had no choice but to kill the tiger before anybody got hurt. Local wildlife experts say this latest attack in California is yet another wake-up call. Everything about it is designed to kill things and eat them, and that's, that's what they are. That doesn't change because they're in a sanctuary or a zoo or in captivity. That's, they're still a tiger. Experts say this latest tragedy also raises broader questions about how wild animals are kept in captivity and whether we're saving enough habitat for them in the wild. Well, an entire family has been killed three, genera three generations rather, at a home near Seattle, and tonight a couple is accused of the crimes. Deputies found the bodies of two young children, a man and woman in their 30s, a man and woman in their 50s as well. The sheriff says all six were shot to death. Police have arrested the daughter of one of the property owners and her boyfriend, but tonight they have no motive for the murders. 
Deputies in South Florida are searching for the driver who was behind the wheel of a hit and run involving a grocery store. Surveillance video shows a minivan crashing into a store in Fort Lauderdale. After slamming through the wall, the driver throws it in reverse and then takes off. The store was closed, so fortunately nobody was hurt. Police believe the driver may have been drunk since the minivan was swerving and going the wrong way right before the crash. Well, did you know that today is the busiest trash day of the year? Trash collectors say people toss out a third more garbage on the day after Christmas than any other day. Tonight, Fox's Peter Linton Smith shows us why that's proving to be a problem for one Bay Area County. Garbage cans are filled today with what was packaging and wrapping paper under the Christmas tree yesterday. Some estimate much of that garbage could be recycled. Oh, I'd say an easy 50% or more because a lot of it's going to be cardboard boxes like what we had. A lot of it's chipboard. Um, a lot of it is from the entertaining, the gallon milk jugs, the orange juice containers. In Pasco County, much of what could have been recycled was trucked to the landfill or garbage incinerator the day after Christmas. Right now, Pasco County is required to export some of its garbage to Osceola County at a cost of nearly $40 a ton. Pasco County does recycle some garbage. Well, currently with curbside recycling, we're doing about 3,300 tons a year. It's a, uh, it's a number we're going to try to improve upon. The county also exports 60,000 tons of garbage. It's one of the reasons Pasco County Commissioner Jack Mariano has suggested the idea of mandatory recycling. That The enforcement is the trickiest part of the whole thing. I think the main thing is people in Pasco County are pretty smart, pretty sensitive to what's going on, that they want to actually do what's the best for the county. And by doing more recycling, they'll, they'll see it, and hopefully we can get them to come on board with us. Advocates of mandatory recycling say the public is already on board to recycle. I mean, we have so many people come from up north down here, and they're already telling us they're in the habit. They want to recycle. If recycling becomes mandatory in Pasco County, garbage cans may not be quite as full the day after Christmas 2008. In Newport Ritchie, Peter Linton Smith, Fox 13 News. And people looking to get rid of their Christmas trees have a place to drop them off in Hillsborough County. Trees can be taken to the county's yard waste recycling site on Falkenberg Road. Pinellas County's waste sites are also accepting Christmas tree drop-offs. Well, bargain hunters hit the malls hoping to find some day after Christmas deals and retailers are banking on shoppers spending big bucks. They say that sales during November and December well, they didn't meet the projections they'd hoped for, and they need to finish the year strong. So many stores are offering big discounts and urging people, use those gift cards that they got for Christmas. As Americans go back to the malls, presidential candidates return to the campaign trail. Republican Rudy Giuliani came to the Bay Area today to meet with veterans in Largo. But as Fox's Jennifer Davis tells us, most of the other candidates are setting their sights on Iowa and New Hampshire. Mike Huckabee, heading out for a post-Christmas pheasant hunt in Iowa, says thanks to his recent rise in the polls, he feels like he's now in the crosshairs of his rivals. We're taking a lot of flack, but it's just a sign that we're hitting the target that these other guys hope to hit, and so they're hitting us instead. For both, citing his change in positions, the biggest paper in the state issued an anti-endorsement, saying Romney's become less believable compared to John McCain. I think that McCain has a very good chance in New Hampshire. You know, he won in 2000. Then there's Rudy Giuliani, who is bucking the trend and basically bypassing both Iowa and New Hampshire. Instead, he's focusing on Florida and other large states where voting will take place on Super Tuesday. In Washington, Jennifer Davis, Fox News. Well, President Bush and Hillary Clinton have something special in common. They've been voted, voted the most admired man and woman in America. It is the sixth straight year the president has shared the honor with the woman who now wants his job. Senator Clinton received 18 percent in the USA Today Gallup poll for the most admired woman. Her husband, Bill, came in second to the president, followed by Al Gore, his former vice president, and presidential candidate Barack Obama. Among the women, Oprah had a strong showing, finishing second, followed by First Lady Laura Bush and actress Angelina Jolie. Next on News Edge, computer hackers are becoming downright mean. See how they're unlocking pages on MySpace and Facebook and doing cruel things with stolen information. Plus, are parents turning a blind eye to their obese kids? The surprising new study that could change the way parents see their children. 
And members of the Gator Nation may soon be able to show their school spirit in a special way just ahead the proposal that will allow true Gators to spend the afterlife at their alma mater. We've got uh, a little bit cooler weather tonight than what we saw last night. There's a chance of some fog developing later tonight. Here's a look at what we expect for the next uh, couple of days here. It's going to be starting to warm up tomorrow afternoon and even warmer on Friday with a high of 81. I'll be back to take a look at what our next chance of rain will be and what the forecast will be for the New Year's Eve holiday. You're watching Fox 13, the most powerful name in local news. Fox Thursday. Experience a winter wonderland. You're an embarrassment to nature. 10,000 years in the making. Ice Age. Thursday at 8, 7 central on Fox. During this holiday season, Fox 13 will highlight some of the great charities in the Tampa Bay area. Through hard work by mostly volunteers, these organizations provide vital services for people in need. The Good Samaritan Mission. The Gulf Coast Oncology Foundation. The Tampa Bay Academy of Hope. And the Homeless Emergency Project all provide vital services for people in need. For contact information and ideas on how you can help, log on to MyFoxTampaBay.com and share the spirit of the season. This segment is sponsored by GMC Truck. We are professional grade. Our Fox Focus tonight spotlights MySpace and other social networking websites. They're coming under a massive electronic hack attack, and these attacks are tasteless, illegal, and sometimes X-rated. As Fox's Sh Phil Schumann tells us tonight, the hackers are creating serious implications for Internet security. It's an unprecedented attack on MySpace, the social networking website with more than 100 million users. I am one, I am many. That's the online message the attackers have left, hacking into some 70,000 MySpace accounts using stolen passwords. It's harassing, it's, it's scary. Personal information on MySpace pages altered with racist and obscene messages, most too graphic to be used on TV. There are threats of rape with the line, I'll probably cut up your pretty face. There are references to swastikas and Nazis invitations to join the KKK. In most cases, there are kids without proper adult supervision that are getting coerced by you know, people that are, are not people you want influencing your kids. This computer security consultant does not want to be identified, concerned about cyber retaliation. In this case, people that are deliberately going after people that are in the military, they're deliberately going after young girls, they're deliberately going after people that they just, you know, think that they want to pick on. It goes way beyond anything that is just simple harassment. It's just, it's beyond what you would want to imagine can happen to your own identity online. MySpace says the safety and security of our users is a top priority for MySpace. This attack was a criminal act. We're making every effort to identify and block the spread of these images on MySpace. We've also reached out to law enforcement. It's so easy to break into one of these systems that uh, really anyone can do it. Professor Amit Sahai of UCLA says we need urgent national action to create a more secure Internet. So they're demonstrating the vulnerabilities that we really have in our infrastructure. Uh, if these same vulnerabilities are, are being exploited by foreign governments or Al-Qaeda or organized crime, then they can wreak serious havoc on our, uh, on our way of life. Sahai points to this study from 2005 by the President's Information Technology Advisory Committee calling for more research dollars, more recruiting of researchers, faster transfer of new technology to the private sector. All this needed right away, but Sahai says not enough's being done. And these are the outrageous consequences, courtesy of your friendly neighborhood hackers. Well, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but new research suggests that parents may be turning a blind eye to their kids' obesity. Researchers at the University of Michigan say 43% of American parents don't see their kids as obese, even though they are. But the survey found that parents became more aware as their children grew older. Experts say pediatricians should do a better job of pointing out obesity problems in kids to the parents. Well, some swimmers in Russia believe icy cold water does a body good. They call themselves the walruses. <laughs> they were wearing very little. <laughs> and they took a dip in sub-zero temperatures. They say the freezing water is an antidote 
for overindulging during the holiday season. And now, Fox 13 meteorologist Andy Johnson with your Sky Tower HD Viper forecast. Our water temperature in the Gulf is a little bit warmer than that. It's up in the upper 60s, even though it's kind of cool for our standards. Sky Tower HD Viper does show some rain with a, another cold front. We had one cold front come to this morning. It's over South Florida. Another quickly moving cold front is moving into the panhandle. There are a lot of showers and storms, but the energy is running out for this system, so I don't think it's going to be bringing us any rain. There's a, maybe a slight chance on our northernmost counties tomorrow during the day. Also in the northeast, a big area of rain along the coast, changing over to snow in places like uh, northern portions of Connecticut and into the middle portions of uh, Massachusetts. Here's a little bit wider view showing the full extent of this rain over uh, the Florida panhandle. Of course, they need rain in places like Alabama and Georgia where they've been in a drought. This is a forecast of low temperatures tonight. This is what I'm forecasting going for a low of 44 in Brooksville because they a little bit further to the north away from the front. Uh, the temperatures drop up pretty quickly. 46 is my forecast for Inverness tonight. 55 in Lakeland should be the low. 60 in St. Petersburg, a little closer to the water there. 56 in Wachula. And you can see the uh, the system to our west kind of breaking apart into two halves and the southern half is just going to run out of steam. So that's why I'm not expecting any significant rain from this. There is another system way back over the western states. That system could bring us some rain, unfortunately, for New Year's Eve and into New Year's Day. We'll have to kind of fine tune the forecast over the next couple of days, but it does look like a chance. 58 degrees now in Tampa, humidity 84%. Winds are out of the north at six, bringing down that a little bit cooler and dry air across central Florida, but there's still enough moisture to work with for some fog to form in the morning. So keep that in mind. Driving first thing in the morning, there could be some patches of fog. It's 61 in Punta Gorda now, 64 in St. Petersburg. Of course, a little bit warmer uh, there because they're being insulated by the waters of Tampa Bay, which are still in the upper 60s. 61 degrees in uh, Lakeland, 52 in Brooksville, but it drops off quickly once you get a little bit farther north of that uh, frontal boundary, up down to 44 tonight in Gainesville and 48 at Ocala. To the north, seasonally cool everywhere. Nothing too unusual, though. 15 at Omaha, it's a little cool for them. 32 at Madison, 37 in Raleigh. Down at Houston, they are 49. The big picture shows the first front that came through, that's stationary. Second front, that'll fizzle out. Third front back out here in the western states. This will combine with another front in Canada. That system is the one that will be bringing us the chance of showers as we get closer to New Year's. You can see that how this progresses over the next 24 hours. The first front kind of runs out of steam and then waits for the second one to become the more dominant front. Here's a look at the forecast for the viewing area for tonight. Partly cloudy skies, seasonably cool, low of 56 in Tampa. But as I pointed out, I expect 40s in our northern counties up in Hernando and Citrus. Then for tomorrow, morning fog, then partly cloudy and warm in the afternoon. Afternoon, a quick warm up up to 78 degrees as our winds turn more to the southeast. Even warmer conditions on Friday, a high 81, and the winds uh, for tomorrow should be turning around more to the southeast, picking up to 10 to 15 knots. Gulf and Bay water temperatures, as I pointed out, are 67 degrees. Here's a look at the tides. High tide at 2.48 in the morning, and my forecast for the next seven days all the way through New Year's and beyond. You can see it's going to be a warm, almost beach weekend on Saturday. Look at that, 81 degrees. But then look at the end of the forecast. Wednesday, 37 in between the transition there. Monday night and Tuesday, we could get some rain. We'll watch that closely for you. Doug? All right, thanks, Andy. Well, for some folks, it's great to be a Florida Gator, and now some UF alumni can be one for all of eternity. University officials say... They want to build a place where people can have their ashes buried on campus. They plan to build it next to Lake Alice. This way, alumni who really love the school can spend forever there. A handful of other universities in the country have similar accommodations, but UF would be the first in our state. Well, the Green Bay Packers are putting a call out to their fans ahead why the team needs their help even before they take the field on Sunday. The Bulls go bowling and they enjoy themselves immediately, even before they leave the airport. Check out the reception in El Paso for USF coming up in sports. We're here today testing for the new Volkswagen sign and drive event, where you can get a new VW for practically just your signature. Just sign and drive. Introducing the Sign Then Drive year-end event. Even better. No down payment, no first month's payment, zero due at signing. Now until January 2nd.
communicate in less than a second on the largest and fastest push-to-talk network. Nice work. The new rugged i335 with Nextel Direct Connect. That's getting it done at sprint speed. It's genius. Macy's biggest denim event of the year. Get a $10 savings certificate when you make a denim purchase of $35 or more. At our biggest denim event of the year. That's the magic of Macy's. Take charge of your driving and reduce the risk. Log on to MyFoxTampaBay.com traffic. See the lights. Save a life. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Transportation. Great holiday gifts my husband's given me. A pool table. A set of golf clubs. I didn't know I played. Well, after coming to an understanding, this year Jack let me pick my own gift. A brand new Cadillac. Honey, your taste has come a long, long way. Visit your local Cadillac dealer for this attractive offer. Residency restrictions apply. Season's best from Cadillac. This holiday season, leave the perfect hint for your wish list. Dreams come true during the Lincoln Wish List event. Featuring the Lincoln MKZ with a no charge premium maintenance plan that's the best in the industry and the hottest new must have exclusive sync from Microsoft. Lease the Lincoln MKZ for just $319 a month and get no charge premium maintenance on any new Lincoln. But hurry, the Lincoln Wish List event ends January 2nd. The new season of American Idol coming this January to Fox 13. Time for the lightning round. A tiger attacks humans at the zoo, and it wasn't the first time. So how did it happen again? Kids keep packing on the pounds, and more and more parents are looking the other way. And Gator fans spending an eternity on campus. Welcome to the lightning round. Let's get right into it, since it's all of us who work here at Fox 13. We don't have a guest. Uh, of course, this, this attack at the San Francisco Zoo is certainly what people are talking about. Cynthia, I know you have a lot of experience with animals. I want to get your thoughts. No experience with tigers, by the way. But, uh, <laughs> but no, I do, I do have an opinion on this, because, I mean, ultimately it comes down to human beings. Right. And mm -hmm. at this same zoo, this same tiger mauled a zookeeper last year. So ultimately if you're going to keep animals in captivity, the people bear the responsibility for those animals and the safety of the people who come to see them. And um, I don't know what it's going to turn out to be, but... You're I, sure the facts aren't in on this I, exactly, yet. Exactly, right. the facts aren't in, but, but the sad thing is somebody's dead. A, mm -hmm. a visitor to the zoo. How horrible Yeah, there were about 20, 25 people right at closing time when it yeah. happened. Yeah, uh, somebody's dead, two people severely mauled, and we have a dead tiger. And we're down to, I think it's just a, maybe a couple of hundred tigers left Anywhere in the so world in the wild. So what should have happened after the tiger attacked the first time? What do you well, think? That's well, that's a good question. Right. Of course, there were, there, and every situation is different because what may have happened is the tiger was being fed at the time. Of course, the zookeeper could have taken some responsibility saying, I made a mistake, I did something wrong. And obviously somebody looked into it and they decided that the, the tiger was still okay if it's kept yeah. in captivity and kept behind the cage and it somehow got out. It right. seems to me they actually did like a bit of an investigation mm -hmm. and the government came in, the state came in and said, there's something not quite right about the way you're, you're doing this and you need right. to make some changes. Yeah. And it's I like, guess they did. Or yeah. Maybe they didn't. Well, more to Jack certain. Hanna said, like it was a, like a, what a wild animal, like a loaded gun. You've Absolutely. got to treat them as, as a loaded gun. Well, we're not going to solve this one here. More to come no. on that later, I'm sure. A new survey shows a startling number of parents are in denial when it comes to their kids' weight. This comes from the University of Michigan. Almost half the parents whose kids fit the description of obese say their kids look okay to them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just have to say that I think, and I, I have three kids, but my kids are all pretty thin. I mean, we try to get them to gain weight. But I think what it is is the parents then would have to accept a certain amount of responsibility themselves. <clears throat> and by saying they look okay to me, maybe these parents don't want to take the responsibility for what they're feeding the kids or maybe not making them exercise. I'm the same boat as you are, Doug. Mine boys especially are so skinny that we're on doctor's orders to feed them french fries and high <laughs> yeah, fat yeah. foods but you know eventually you're afraid that those are going to be their eating habits and yeah. it's going to catch up with them so you want to teach good eating habits get the vegetables in there and set an example as a parent and you know what if you have a question ask your pediatrician right. or doctor what about my kid and you know if you're a parent sometimes you have to hear the hard truth about something and maybe make some lifestyle changes for you and your family this is the parent that ultimately has to control the amount of intake that's of, right of food. Yeah. lay off the fries well it seems former gators still love their school of course they always love their school even after they move along and now some will never be separated from campus there are plans to build a place where they can have their ashes 
buried. <laughs> no, I, I think it's a great idea to send them all there. No, I'm going to tick off a lot of Gator fans. I, I can say that because my, my dad's a Gator. I'm a Seminole. My mom went to University of Miami. Okay, but, so Florida uh, State. Would you, yeah, would Florida you be buried State, in Florida State? I don't know. I don't know about I mean, I do love Florida State, but I don't know if I'd want to be buried there. Yeah. <laughs> Three to $5,000 is the cost. Uh, the, the, the people who, who are putting this plan forth say that a lot of people don't have the family plots anymore, and the school is the closest that they have to family. So, hey, why not capitalize on it? And the University of Notre Dame and uh, University of Virginia both do this. You know what they're really trying to do? Why? They're trying to get people to leave everything for the university. <laughs> yeah, now, right. If you're going to leave yourself there, you might as well leave a little leave, extra. Leave, you know? your leave your ashes and leave and a lot of your, your money. money. <laughs> exactly. money yes. for the bill. exactly. Right. That's what it's all about. All right. That's money. all we have time for. Uh, sports is coming your way next. USF stars in the Sun Bowl welcome party. I wonder if Oregon gets the same treatment. All the fun and excitement from the airport in El Paso, Texas, next in sports. Matt McConaughey's pretty cool, right? He's a jerk. What did he do to her? We'll show you next TMZ. Tonight at 11.30 on Fox 13. Now you see them. Thousands of Hondas on clearance. Soon, you won't. It all ends January 2nd in Pinellas, Pasco, and Hillsborough counties. See the lowest clearance payments and financing of the year. Like 08 Civics, just $199 a month. And select Hondas with 0.9% financing. Hurry in and see thousands of Hondas on clearance. Because soon, you won't. Think Honda for the holidays. It's happy Honda days. At your Gulf Coast Honda dealers in Hillsborough, Pasco, and Pinellas counties. Honda, gotta get it. It's the final days of the Chevy Red Tag event, where the price on the tag is the price you'll pay. And while supplies last, get 0% financing on almost every 07 Chevy car, pickup, and SUV. That's 0% financing for 60 months for qualified buyers on almost every 2007 Chevy. See some red and save some green. Click on Chevy.com, then see your Southern Chevy dealer. The world's largest retailer of hot tubs is having a factory liquidation sale. This weekend only, choose from a huge selection of Thermospa hot tubs. New units slightly scratched up to 50% off. Trade-ins as low as $3.99. And see our new revolutionary swim spa on sale. Thermospa's hot tub liquidation sale. This weekend only at the Thermospa's factory outlet, Nebraska Avenue, Tampa. For more info, call 813-910-SPAS. That's 813-910-SPAS. What day is it? Sir? So I haven't missed it. Today, today, everyone gets a rear seat entertainment system. And to you, a rear seat entertainment system. And one for you, and one for you, and one for you, young boy. Rear seat entertainment system, everyone. This holiday season, lease the all new 2008 XC90 SUV and get a complimentary rear seat entertainment system. Get to your Jeep dealer and get a great deal during the final days of the event of a lifetime. Get 0% financing on all 08 Jeep vehicles like Grand Cherokee. Plus, make no payments till summer on all Jeep vehicles, including the new all Jeep Liberty. And the fuel efficient 28 miles per gallon Jeep Patriot. Plus, you'll be covered by the best warranty in the business, the Jeep Lifetime Powertrain Warranty. Blaze a trail to your Jeep dealer today because the event of a lifetime ends in seven days. Every season of American Idol, the contestants surprise us with their talent. Welcome to Hollywood, baby! With their ambition. I'm the next American Idol, I promise! I'm the next American Idol! And with their passion. No, we did it! So, in the spirit of give and take, this season we've got a few surprises for them. America, just you wait. American Idol. American Idol, coming this January to Fox 13. This segment is sponsored by Pontiac. Eight performance machines, all designed for action. And now, get the edge on sports. USF arrives in El Paso tonight. The activities leading up to the New Year's Eve Sun Bowl kickoff as soon as the Bulls walk off the plane. And USF wide receiver Carlton Mitchell hams it up the most, joining in singing and dancing with the mariachi band. The Bulls all smiles enjoying this reception. They also attend a welcome barbecue and plan to visit a hospital tomorrow. Of course, they will practice. Jim Levitt just hopes Mitchell shows off more moves on the field against Oregon. The Outback Bowl teams arrive in Tampa Bay, Tennessee, and Wisconsin. Sit down to this welcome dinner at the convention center. 
on the menu nearly three tons of food, including 750 pounds of steak, 750 pounds of chicken, 900 pounds of ribs, 1,300 pounds of chocolate cake. You've heard of the Freshman 15? Call this the Outback Bowl 15. These guys sure to put on a few pounds this week, Doug. <laughs> yeah, it all looks so good. I could use to uh, or stand to lose a few right now. The Green Bay Packers need a little help on the field this weekend. They need folks to tackle all the snow. 300 fans are needed Thursday to shovel off the field. They'll be paid eight bucks an hour. Green Bay takes on Detroit this weekend at Lambeau Field. Well, that's all we have time for on News Edge tonight. Have a great night.